Hey, it's Jose here. And I just wanted to let you know that if you have a message to share, I want to tell you about Anchor. It is free and it is an easy way to create a podcast for you to share that message. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. There are certain creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. And most importantly, you can get your message out to the world and impact the lives that you were created to impact. Download Anchor right now. My name is Jose Vargas, and I am on a mission to help you create breakthroughs in your personal and professional life so that you can grow and lead your life with excellence. Welcome to the Jose Vargas Show. I am your host, Jose Vargas. Thank you for listening. In this episode, like every episode that we create for you, are literally to awaken, to equip, and to empower you to become the leader that you were created to be, a leader worth following. And as you know, the reason I'm here talking to you and sharing some of my journey with you is because I believe that we're supposed to lead our lives in such a way that inspires others. And I call that excellence, leading towards excellence. On the journey towards excellence, we often hit roadblocks, what I call detours, as I share in one of the books that I wrote a few years ago, and we get stuck. And so my goal is to help you strategize to get unstuck, to become that leader worth following. And one of the, let's use the word ingredients, is this thing called self-discipline. And that is what I want to talk to you about today. Oftentimes, people will tell you that you need self-discipline to be more successful. But no one tells you how to get it. And what are the main important areas that you should be implementing self-discipline in? And in this episode, I'm not only going to tell you that you need to have self-discipline, but I'm going to tell you the source and the key ingredient to having self-discipline. One of the mysteries in our world is what Sanders, the founder of KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, he founded the restaurant, he founded the original recipe, Fried Chicken, which has served as the cornerstone of KFC's menu since the recipe was perfected in the 1940s. This blend of 11 herbs and spices is one of the most tightly guarded trade secrets in the restaurant industry. But we bet that you didn't know exactly to what length the company goes in order to keep it top secret. I'm going to read you an article from the New York Times. First of all, the recipe itself signed by Colonel Sanders himself is locked inside of a vault at KFC's headquarters. The spice mix isn't even assembled by one company. In order to keep it a secret, half of the ingredients are blended in this laboratory and then the mixture is sent to another place where it is blended together. And so during a recent chat with KFC's head chef, Bob Daz revealed that he doesn't even know the secret formulas, according to the New York Times. It's only known by a very small number of company's highest ranking executives. And he's been with the company for, guess what, 20 years at the time of that publication. The company says that the original handwritten recipe is housed in a 770-pound safe encased in two feet of concrete and guarded by video cameras and motion detectors and having a secret service background that is tight security it is the fort knox of fried chicken so over the years many people have tried to replicate the legendary formula uh, with varying degrees of success so what's the point why do i bring kfc kentucky fried chicken not just to make you hungry right but there is a secret recipe that they that made them successful And there is also a secret recipe that only a few people uh, know to give not only KFC success, but that will give you success as a leader. And I alluded to it in the beginning of this episode, and it's called self-discipline. Think about it. You look up to people who demonstrate self-discipline. You don't follow people's advice, hopefully, that are not self-disciplined, right? You wouldn't follow advice from someone who's overweight, who's telling you how to eat healthy. 
You wouldn't follow advice from a financial planner whose personal finances are a mess. I mean, you wouldn't do that with your eyes wide open. So you look up to people who demonstrate self-discipline in a particular area of their lives. You're attracted to people who are clearly self-disciplined in a particular area of their life. You can tell if a person is self-disciplined in their appearance, in their physical body. You, you can tell if they're self-disciplined with their habits. We go to sports events and cheer for our favorite team because of how they carefully handle their sport and, and how they carefully handle their sport is a result of their discipline in practicing that sport. So, I know people who don't have the self-discipline, and I'm sure you know people as well, or maybe you're one of those people, right? And and again, I'm not. This is not a judgment, but this is uh, just a lesson that we are applying to my life, and and hopefully that you will apply to your life to become more self-disciplined, because we want to achieve the results in certain areas of our lives, and we want to have the impact that. Uh, we're called to have. So these people though that you've seen that I've interacted with, they don't have much self-discipline and they don't have much success either. Okay. So if self-discipline is tied to success and the definition of success is obviously different for all of us, right? Your definition of success is definitely different than mine's and that's okay. But if that's true, then how do you become more self-disciplined so that you can have the success that you want to have in your own life and leadership to move your life towards the direction of your goals and your calling and your purpose? I want to give you, first off, I want to give you three areas that I believe that you need self-discipline in. These are not the only three areas you need self-discipline in, but these are the only, but these are the only three that I want to talk about in this episode. And I believe it's probably the three most important ones that you need to start off with. The first one is your emotions. Okay? Emotions must not be ignored, but they must be managed. Your emotions must not be ignored, but they must be managed. You can't suppress your emotions. You have to acknowledge them, but you have to manage them. If you don't manage your emotions, they will control your life. They will control your relationships. They will control your promotion or lack thereof. They will control how successful you are in life. And since emotions change, as you know, your life will always feel like you're on a broken roller coaster ride. Okay? So how do you control your emotions? I'm going to give you three ways to control your emotions. The first way to control your emotions is, like I said, acknowledge your emotions. When I coach people or teach people uh, through speaking and I teach them the lead through method, how to get unstuck and become the leader uh, worth following, the first step of that lead through method is what I call located. And it's really to identify where you currently are, okay? Because once you acknowledge where you are, then you can progress, then you can move forward. So how do you control your emotions? Well, you acknowledge them. That's the first step. You acknowledge what you're feeling. You acknowledge the the magnitude of what you're feeling. If you're feeling angry, you you acknowledge it. I'm angry or if you're upset or if you're disappointed or if you're ashamed or whatever that emotion is for you, you acknowledge it. Number two, you allow that emotion to heal. Okay, you allow that emotion to heal. How do you do that? There's very, a variety of ways that you can heal your emotions. You can talk to a therapist. You can talk to a pastor. You can talk to a coach. You can talk to a counselor. You can talk to a psychologist. Whatever you need because only you know what that emotion is and how it's affecting your life, how it's affecting your relationships, how it's affecting your leadership and your ability to lead yourself. So, Acknowledge them, allow them to heal by getting around individuals who can help you heal them, who can help you process them. And number three, how do you control your emotions is by not letting them control your decisions. Okay? By not letting them control your decisions. It's not a good idea to make a decision in life, in leadership, or in your personal relationships when you are in a a a different emotional state. If you are in an angry state, please don't make decisions. 
Okay, most of the decisions that I have regretted in my life, and I'm sure you can agree to this in your own life, is based on decisions that I have made when I was on a different emotional state. Okay, so you got to guard against making decisions when your emotions are out of whack, they're out of place, they're in a different place than where you normally want them to be. My daughter watches this program called Daniel the Tiger. And when when Daniel the Tiger gets mad, you know, he's a he's a tiger. And there's this this song that says, when you feel so mad and you want to roar, take a deep breath and count to four. Well, I know that sounds silly, but the principle is a great one and it works. The other day I was getting a little aggravated at my daughter because she wasn't listening and she immediately noticed that I was getting upset that my emotions were changing and she began to to count to sing that song. She began to say, "What do you do when you feel so mad and you want to roar? Take a deep breath and count to 4." I immediately started smirking, trying not to let her see me smile, but I I couldn't help it because it it was a principle that not only works for toddlers, but it works for all of us. When we feel like our emotions are getting the best of us, we must either detach ourselves from the situation and breathe, think about it, and then approach the problem with the situation. And, And sometimes that entails going for a walk. Sometimes that is leaving the situation, leaving the meeting, and excusing yourself, okay? But no good decisions comes when your emotions are driving those decisions, all right? So the three areas that you need self-discipline in if you want to achieve whatever your definition of success is as a leader and lead your life towards excellence, the first area is the area of your emotions. The second area is your mindset. Your mind is the control tower of your life. I'm going to say that again. Your mind is the control tower of your life. This is the place where the decisions of your lives will be made. Your mind. Victory or defeat. Success or failure will be derived from your mind. So control what goes in and what it meditates on. What you, often think, what you often think about will expand in your life. And that is a fact. What you often think about will expand in your life. So if you don't like what you see, change what you're thinking. You have control of what goes in your mind. No one else can. You can control what goes in your mind. Wherever your mind goes, so will your life and leadership. And that is a fact. So change your leadership by changing and filtering what comes into your mind and renewing your mind with good things, positive things, lovely things, joyful things, peaceful things, pure things. Okay? Controlling and filtering what goes in your mind will allow you to control your mindset. Okay? The next area that you need self-discipline in is in your words. The words you speak will ultimately become life. The words you speak will ultimately become life. Why am I repeating that? Because I believe that that is a fact. I'm seeing it in my own life. I'm sure you have seen it in your life. Words have the power to build you up or words have the power to tear you down. So what are you saying to yourself when no one is watching? How do you treat yourself while you're driving? Are you speaking words of hope? Are you speaking words of a bright future? Are you speaking words that are speaking life into your current situation, into your current leadership? How are you speaking to your team? How are you speaking to the people that you're leading? You can always tell what's in a person's heart and mind by how they speak. So are you speaking words of hope, of life? Or are you negative? Are you pessimistic in your approach to life? So change your words because just like you can change and manage your thoughts, you can also filter your words. Okay? So these are the top three areas that you must apply self-discipline in. And again, there's other areas like your health, your finances, and relationships, and so forth. But I believe that these three things right here, if you start with these three 
areas and you begin to apply self-discipline in these three areas, your life will begin to move in the direction of your desires, your calling, and your best leadership yet. But how do you become more self-disciplined? Jose, you're telling me the areas that I need to apply self-discipline in. Now, how do I, how do I build or become more self-disciplined? Well, the fact that I say self-discipline, number one, it shows us that there's multiple disciplines, right? We're going to talk about, talk about self-discipline. So how do you become more self-disciplined? The secret recipe on how to get self-discipline is having a captivating vision for your life and leadership. That's how it is. That's simple. It is having a captivating vision for your life and leadership. If you don't think you can accomplish your vision, let me just tell you this. You won't commit to the process of attaining it. Without a vision, people lose constraint. Without a vision, people people die, basically. Without a vision, you have nothing to be disciplined about. Without a vision, you have nothing to move towards, too. When you have a picture of where you want to be, of where you want your leadership to be, a picture of what you want your marriage to be, a picture of, of that book that you want to write, a picture of the physical shape you want to be in. Without that picture, that vision in your mind, you will be less disciplined and you will never achieve the success that you want to have and have the impact that you're called to have in the people in your life. Because you won't be disciplined if you don't have a vision of where you want your life to go. This is why when I'm talking to either my nieces or nephews or if if I'm talking to uh, my clients or or a group of people that I'm speaking to, I want to know what is it that you want in life? Because if I can understand what is it that you want, then we can build steps in order to get there, but you will never have the discipline to... To commit to the process unless you know the vision. Discipline starts with vision. Discipline starts with vision. If you want more discipline in your life, you need to have a vision. Get a clear vision on what you want to see in your life. And this is what I teach. The first step is located. Figure out where you are. Right? You can't change... What you don't know needs changing. Makes sense, right? You can't change what you don't know needs changing. So if you identify where you are and what needs changing and and where you currently are, then you can begin to change it, which is step two. You begin to dissect it. Stop repeating the same things unless they are principles that are working and moving you closer to your ultimate goal. And step number three I call dream it, which is basically is casting a vision for your life. What do you see? What do you see? Not what do you think can happen, but what do you want to happen? Once you know it, then you can build the discipline muscle to get it. Because discipline is a muscle. That you must work at. That you must build. This is why I'm constantly applying this stuff to my own life. Because I want to continually build that muscle. So what is it that you truly want? What is it that you truly want in your health? What is it that you truly want in your faith? In your relationship with God? What do you want in your relationships? What do you want in your calling? In your purpose? What contribution do you want to have in other people's lives? What do you want in your finances? What do you want in your career? Cast vision for yourself. And then apply the secret sauce in order to pursue it. I just gave you one of the major keys that that will unlock your full potential as a leader. Discipline. Starts with vision. That's the secret sauce. I have a dream. That's the vision. 
And once you are captivated by that vision, very little things in life will sway, sway, sway you from achieving that vision. So, what do you want? If you need to share it with someone, email me. Jose, J-O-S-E at reachinghighernow.com. Email me. What do you want? But listen, it takes time and it takes work. But together we can become a leader worth following. You don't have to remain stuck. You don't have to put up a front. But you can take actionable, practical steps to get breakthroughs. And not just accept your life, but lead your life towards excellence and towards impact because isn't that what we want we want to have impact in this world and we want to impact the people in our lives i want to thank you for joining me today if this episode was helpful to you would you leave me a review wherever you listen to podcasts and will you share it with another leader i'll see you soon